Skype with us to speak into that uh, conversation. Right there we have Mark Ball, and he is the Bloomberg economist for Africa and Middle East. Well, Mark, one of the first uh, and most interesting uh, things uh, to happen is, of course, that there was a 50% tax that was slapped on some aspects of the betting and gaming industry. What is your take on that? Yes, I mean, uh, this is in line with, you know, a development in the in development world where, you know, so-called sin taxes, that it's easier to tax things like alcohol, tobacco, gaming, they are seen as, as harmful for, uh, for individuals and society as a whole that's often less politically sensitive to tax these issues and the tax food and other issues that hurt a general public more directly. This has to do with sort of so-called negative externalities and economics where by taxing this kind of activity, you hope to reduce it and also the harmful uh, impact it does have on society. But often these kind of taxes, okay, Alcohol taxes are slightly different, but often these kind of taxations don't have an, an, that much of an impact on the on the budget as a whole. Maybe in a place like Macau, where you know the gaming is and casino activities are very very prominent in the economy, but I don't think that will be the case here in uh, in Kenya. Well, uh, uh, part of the interesting, uh, of course, uh, bits about uh, that budget is the fact that many people have termed it. Well, uh, pro poor at this time as we go towards the elections, what is your take on that and what else stood out for you about the budget? Yes, I mean, I think it does make sense for, as the budget does, to uh, now you have had this infrastructure push. Uh, the state has uh, invested in geothermal power in the Rift Valley and, of course, the Standard Gauge Railway, and that has led to a very substantial budget deficit over the last few years, which has meant that, you know, there's been an increase in public debt. Uh, and it makes sense that once these projects are coming to a close, to actually look to reduce the budget set deficit and reinforce uh, public debt uh, sustainability over the medium term. And that is what the budget seems to be doing and also the aims over uh, fiscal years going up to 2020. Uh, but, you know, the you know, the proof is in the pudding if they can actually deliver on this. There are some who might believe that in absolute terms our debt has gotten to unsustainable levels. But, of course, uh, as the ratio to GDP, that might still be well within our limits. Is that your perspective? What do you have to say about public debt in particular? Yes, I mean, I look more at sort of debt, how much, you know, the cost of servicing debt, which is still relatively low in Kenya compared to countries like Ghana, but it is becoming to a level where it would be better to try to reduce it over time than continue to borrow heavily. I mean, I'm sure there are continued infrastructure needs, and the government will continue, or Kenya will continue to invest in infrastructure to a higher degree than Nigeria, Ghana, other countries that are more under fiscal stress, or where the economy is under more stress. But I think it does make sense to reduce this now and maybe uh, yeah, try to reduce the budget deficit and the increase in public debt. And once you brought that down, maybe have another push in the infrastructure, see what infrastructure needs are, uh, are, uh, are most imminent. Well, Mark, there are those who say that, well, this debt is actually helping us grow infrastructure and indeed grow our economy, that it's not driving growth for everybody. Do you think there are ways that uh, that budget has been used to, well, ensure a trickle-down of these benefits to the poor in ways that will enable the economy to grow at all levels for everybody? Well, I mean, the cost of, of transport affects everyone, you know, the all the consumers, uh, you know, they are affected. It's the, you know, they add the cost of the transporting goods up from Mombasa to other parts of the country adds to to the import, the cost of imported goods, which adds to everyone's spending envelope. And that, you know, if imported goods, uh, if the price of their goods rises because of the transport cost, it means that people have less money to spend on other things that are used domestically and also services. So it should, in, investing in infrastructure should also benefit poor people, even though it might be this trickle-down effect that sometimes can seem a bit elusive. Um, Mark, our economy is almost, well, 84% driven by agriculture and things around 
business around uh, that sector. Do you think we have been able to allocate enough funds to be able to drive both innovation, value addition, and of course ensure that our farmers start to come into the modern economy and not do just a subsistence farming, but farming as a business, while also pulling in the youth into that equation? Yes, I mean, the, uh, all governments, or basically all governments in Africa, aim to support the, uh, the agricultural sector, but quite often this, this proves quite difficult to do. I mean, I do think improving the transport infrastructure makes it more easy to, uh, for farmers to bring their goods to market. You often see that, uh, you know, if the roads are very bad, like they are in some parts of Africa, a lot of the goods get damaged between the farm and the market, and also that definitely affects the uh, price that this goods can sell in the market and directly affects the income of farmers. So I do think, uh, you know, in Improvement in infrastructure helps this. Of course, there are other measures with uh, uh, with yields and you know seed stocks. Rwanda has definitely made a lot of uh, progress in this this area and managed to improve the uh, the incomes of, uh, of farmers in Rwanda. Ethiopia has made similar measures, and maybe Kenya can look at these two countries and see if there's anything they can borrow from their books. Mm. Well, indeed, uh, thank you very much for those insights there into our freshly delivered uh, budget having happened on Thursday last week. That, of course, there is Mark Boland. He is an economist with Bloomberg. He is the economist for Africa and the Middle East. Thank you very much for taking the time uh, there, talking to us live from London. While we stay with much the same conversation we touched on right there at the end, of course, a bit about... Uh, health, which of course we will be focusing on later, but now to some other stories of the day where Kenya Re has announced a profit before tax, which stood at 4.2 billion shillings for the year 2016, in a year where net 